In this video we will be covering some great tips on getting started in Stranded Deep and just make you aware of some things that you may not be aware of when you first start playing. So whether you've got it for the Xbox, PS4 or PC, all of these will be relevant to you. So let's get into it. What's up ladies and gents, boys and girls, it is HG Dan here and as mentioned, I am going to be going through some tips just to get you started in Stranded Deep. Now, these tips are for people that have literally just picked up the game, just about to start playing, and just want a little bit of a head start when they start playing. Now, we have got a storm kicking off in the background, so hopefully you can hear me over that. I'm, I'm not too worried. I will adjust the sound levels to make sure that you can. But we're going to start off with the raft. Now, obviously, when you start in the raft, when you first start, you're told to pick up the paddle here and you're told to paddle your way to the closest island. Now, that's also well and good. But what that doesn't tell you is that once you're paddled to the closest island, you can put this paddle back on the raft. Now, you should probably do that. Now, the reason for doing that is you'll lose the paddle. The amount of times I've forgotten to do it and the paddle's lost, that means that this raft is pretty much unusable. Um, it doesn't matter too much because you can quickly build your own raft and you can just sail away on there. Now what the tutorial also doesn't tell you is what's in your raft storage and the fact that you've got an anchor as well. So we'll just go into the storage. Now every raft will have a few rations, a bandage and a compass. Now I've taken this compass out but the bandage is really useful for if ever you have the bleeding uh, feature uh, status on your watch. So as you can see there we've currently got healthy. Make a note of that because we're going to be coming back to that in a minute. Uh, but you will also have a bleeding status on here and your arm will look pre pretty bloody. Now if you do ever get that, that's generally caused by attack by a shark or something along those lines. Just come in here, grab your bandage and use your bandage and that will sort that out. The other thing to make note of is your rations. Now the emergency food and water rations is exactly, literally what it says on the tin. If you are running low on food or water, then you can use these emergency rations. Um, I would, however, just keep them back and use them as an emergency. There is really quite easy to get your water still and smoker uh, up and running. I have got a video on top five things to build, which I'll link up in the video now. Um, but just make sure that you get those going and you'll be good to go and you can get your own food and get your own water and you won't have to worry too much. Until then though, if you do get in a bit of a pickle with your food uh, and your water, then don't be afraid to use a ration. You will find lots of these as you start going diving through the ships. Now speaking of going diving through the ships, this is where your anchor comes in. Now you can make your own anchor. As you can see, I've created a, a one over there on that raft. Um, when you get going but the anchors are really useful for when you do go out into the slightly deeper water um, and you just want your raft there as like a, a means of being safe and just sort of like being there you can deploy your anchor that will literally just keep it wherever it is that you left it and then you can jump back on the ship um, once you're done exploring now what once you have paddled your way to the island what you will need to do is find um, somewhere to store your boat. Now as you can see we are in the middle of a storm uh, but this is good and fine because we have dragged this onto the island so it's not going anywhere um, which is something that you might not be aware to do. Now it doesn't say to drag your ship onto the uh, drag your raft onto the island I don't believe unless it's been changed or at the time of recording this video it certainly hadn't but you can drag it onto the island to make sure that it doesn't randomly start floating away and before you know it you're stranded in stranded deep so moving on to there we're just going to go over to something that's a little bit more advanced uh, but something to be aware of and something to just have in the back of your mind for when you can start creating it and that is these container shelves now as you can see here i have four container shelves each contain three containers you will find these generally on islands or in the boats um, but these container shells effectively tie these containers to this location now this ship itself has actually been capsized um, it happened live on streams if you do want to check out some stranded deep 
live uh, gameplay, then do make sure to come and check me out on YouTube on the same channel on a Monday or Wednesday at 7.30 GMT. Uh, now we do have um, we do have some fun uh, and people do generally come along and just sort of like ask some for some tips live in game uh, that I might not have covered um, in a video as of yet. Um, so do feel free if you are stuck or you just want some advice to either um, drop a comment below or to just come to a live video. Um, but getting back to these containers, now these container shelves, they are only three planks. Now when you get to a point that you're probably looking to go out and explore and you're going out to sort of like tank containers and you want to take containers with you, you're probably going to have a plank station um, in place. Now we have got one on the island uh, over there. Let me just zoom in on this bad boy for you. So there you can see our little planking station there which helps you create planks from um, the trees of um, palm trees. Uh, which it looks like I've taken all of them down on the island. Never mind. Um, so that is how you create those so the next thing uh, that i just want to go through and show you um, is yellow handles on the side of these boats now if you have a boat on this situation or a boat like this you know you might be struggling to get on top of the boat now if that is the case do not fret because that's what these yellow handles are for. Now, providing you are in a position or some, somewhere in shallow water where you can jump, you can generally get to, not like that, you need to jump, uh, you can generally get to the yellow handles. Uh, if I can just control, there we go. So if you jump at the yellow handles, that will allow you to get onto the ships. It's much easier than sort of like dragging this boat around, uh, your raft around, trying to get onto, you know, an area where you can just sort of like get onto uh, any, any ledge that you can and just trying to jump onto there. So that's something to be aware of. You do need to be able to jump though. If you are too deep in the water that you can't, oh, it's let me jump now. If you're too deep in the water that you can't jump, then that's just it's just not going to work you need to be able to jump in the shallow water which i believe was in the most recent update for the console that they've allowed you to do that now which is a good thing oh we got some smoke on here uh, that's that's good to know um <laughs> now i will be coming at something else but before i carry on with my tips i would love it if you could subscribe and like this video and just comment below your favorite tip or if there's any other tips that you feel as though could be covered um, then please make sure to drop them below uh, and if you did find that there was something that you didn't know in game and it has helped you out while playing then please let me know what that tip is i would love to hear your feedback and i'd love to respond to all of your comments um, if you do check some of my other videos out you will see that i have a very high response rate to everybody um, now while the community is still small i want to maintain that so if you do want to have a chat then by all means just come and uh, drop a comment and I will I will happily respond so moving on we have water splashes now this is something that is um, not as commonly known actually I have discovered since doing the live streams and um, but you can see in the distance there we do have two splashes happening now we have the really obvious one around the mast here uh, which it would make sense but you also have another one there now what that generally means is that there is a boat or resource like stone clay or something under the water there that you need to probably go and check out um, normally it's a boat normally it's like a mast or something that's just tickling the tip of the water or um, there's a boat underneath there or maybe it's just a, a deposit of clay or something along those lines now you can see those easier at night time um, so if you're if you don't if your island doesn't have any of these then do make sure to run around at night not every island is going to have some so that's something to be aware of, um, but just be sure to keep an eye out for that um, for when you're feeling particularly adventurous. Now, moving on to something that happens in most games ever, save often. Quite often you might go out to a, a new island, uh, you haven't built up your shelter yet, or you can't build a shelter because it's infested with the little piggies which are the bane of my existence in this game, um, and they will just kill you. Now, obviously, if you haven't saved for a long time, 
not good. I generally, whenever I leave an island, I save the game and then I head out. Um, I also make sure that I save and wait till it's daytime. It's better to travel during the day than at night. Some nasty stuff comes out at night and it can be quite horrid if you get to an island and you can't see where all the urchins are, so you're poisoned before you get off anywhere and then all of a sudden all the pigs start attacking you. It's just good to have a better idea, better visibility if you're exploring somewhere new. So something else now that I want to tag onto is health regen. Now health regen is possible in this game. Um, I'm currently full health, so I, unless I was to go and pick a fight with a shark and hope that I don't die, um, I'm just going to show you how to do health regen. Uh, now I think what we've got here, there we go, we're just going to drink this water and always fill this up afterwards. Once you've used... Um, once you've used up all of your fiber, just fill it up. It'll take five seconds. The amount of trees you chop down and the palm fronds that you have, I always tend to have a stockpile there so I can just quickly fill it up. Um, that was a tip that I wasn't actually planning on saying, so there's a bonus tip for you. Bonus! And now, moving on to what I was talking about, what we have here is this status healthy. Now, you may have heard the watch beep, how you get healthy is by having high food, high water. That will um, give you the healthy status. And when you have the healthy status, that is when your health is regening. So if you ever do get injured or you ever do get hurt, then what you can do is just make sure to um, eat some food, drink some water until you get the beep and you get your healthy status. Uh, and then you'll start regenerating health. So something else now that I just want to cover is um, something that come up in my stream most recently is fires. Now when your fire dies out you can see that it's kind of got like health thing there. You can fill them up. It does only take four sticks. Uh, I'm going to try and do it with one. Hab's done on me that I didn't realise. You just fill it up and it's done. You don't have to worry about keep building fires or anything like that. Just get some sticks and refill the sticks. Now the last tip, now this one is probably the best tip that I can give anyone because it's something that happens for a new player the most. Um, these yucca trees. As you can see, this yucca tree is full. When you hit these yucca trees, it likes to uh, drop off like six fibrous leaves, which is great. Once it's dropped the leaves off, leave it there. Reason being, um, they will grow back so when they end up when you sort of like take the leaves off and they end up looking like this then make sure to just leave it there um, because give it two or three days in game those leaves will grow back and you can get six more fibrous leaves now I'm hearing that a lot of people are just chopping these down for the sticks try not to do that if you have to then you have to um, but try not to do that um, if you do find you've chopped down all of the the trees on the island um, what I tend to do, I will still leave these up and then I will just go to a close nearby island that I need sticks or, or logs or anything and just harvest that island there. Uh, and then that is uh, that will just give you a constant supply of fibrous leaves if you leave those up. Once again, thank you very much for watching the video. There are some more video content here for you to have a look at if you want some more tips around Stranded Deep. And I do go live on a Monday and Wednesday right here on YouTube at 7.30pm. So please make sure to subscribe and I will see you in another video.